out, my friends. Have a great rest of your night. And I hope to see you guys at the Shake, Rattle, and Glow Monster Ball. Man, I've been waiting for the monster ball all year. It's so gonna be the first ride of the night for me and K Dog here at Hershey Park for Dark Nights. What do you think, baby? Dark Nights? So far, so good is right. It's gonna be a beautiful night, a little bit overcast. We had some fog and a little bit of drizzle heading into Hershey, but uh, you know, hey, Pittsburgh, perfect weather. But it followed us there. Pennsylvania, the Washington of the East. Well, I mean, it really wouldn't be a horror night event. It's a little bit of side crush action. This is the world famous Intamin side crush. But no, this thing is awesome. Alright. We have a little bit of Fahrenheit action. So again, absolutely phenomenal night here at uh, Hershey Park. So uh, we just got off Storm Runner a few minutes ago. What, uh, what do you think, Hi. Uh, that was a crazy ride in the dark and the fog. Yes. The Halloween time. The, the fog, the light, is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> These guys are in for drop. one heck of a ride. Uh, if you guys have not already checked it out, you can check out our underrated series uh, that features this very ride, Fahrenheit. Uh, Definitely an interesting watch to give you a couple minutes of the, the background and uh, some of the information leading up to, uh, to this ride and how it came to be. So, check that out. I'll put it in a uh, link in the description below. So, just got off a little Wildcat's Revenge. Um, man, is that good. Uh, what a great night here. I mean, the fire, the fire. Check this out. What a great night. Some of the costumed actors, man. These guys are... <laughs> these guys are intense, man. Uh, phenomenal job by the uh, the Hershey crew. I mean, I know that in past years, you know, uh, even pre-pandemic, this really wasn't what Hershey was known for. It wasn't their cup of tea. Not until uh, recently in the past couple years have they uh, really started to get into the, the adult version of Fright. So shortly here, they're going to be shutting the lights off on the attractions, and we're going to be riding in the dark for an hour, uh, which should be pretty awesome. Um, I mean, really, anytime you got power attack, it's better, right? So, yeah, I mean, all in all, A plus to Hershey Park so far. They have really hit it out of the park to where Fright Fest is here. Where um, Fright Night, whatever the heck they call it now. Every park has a different name to theirs. We came down here. Uh, we're going to try to hop on Lightning Racer and uh, maybe hit one or two rides on this because I doubt we'll be back down at this end of the park before close. So uh, we'll catch up with you in a bit. Or will we? Yeah, they all are.
front row. Sky rush. Two trains away, two dispatches out. All clear. And yeah, this is gonna be awesome. Let's see if we can catch them going up. Well, as only we're able to do, we decided to leave Hershey instead of going back to the park, and uh, we decided to head north up to beautiful, dreary New England, and I say that jokingly. Um, this area has recently been bashed from severe thunderstorms and severe flooding from the recent hurricane that had come up uh, the eastern seaboard through the Atlantic. So this is actually my first time at this park. Uh, lots of puddles, lots of risk of flooding as we were traveling here, uh, or at least that's what the GPS warned us of. Uh, thrills this way. Well, Salim, let's see if you are telling the truth. Uh, Salim obviously being a reference to Salim Basul, the newest appointed CEO of Six Flags uh, as of roughly two years ago now. So from what we hear, or from what I've heard uh, from several friends, this is one of the Supposedly, one of the best one-two punches of any park in the country. And that is one of the biggest reasons why Superman, they do have a Batman clone here. But then again, if you're a Six Flags park, um, newsflash, you probably have a Batman clone. But not always necessarily named Batman. Thanks, Laurent. Uh, yeah, so lots of great stuff here. And this is the second reason for that one-two punch claim. So we're gonna find out what all the hysteria and the hype is about. I'm gonna stand outside the gate and finish this cigarette because I am a responsible patron of amusement parks. So yeah guys, I am pretty stoked. We're gonna get to see some Fright Fest here, but the number one thing on our agenda tonight is uh, heading about an hour south to head to Lake Compounds to go and get a night ride on Boulder Dash, which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, for those of you that do not know, um, we are from the Pittsburgh area, so our home park growing up was Kennywood, and that would make our home park as, uh, as children uh, Idlewild Park in uh, Lake Anier, Pennsylvania. So at uh, Idlewild and Ligonier, they have one small children's wooden roller coaster. It's called Rollo Coaster. And this happens to be my first roller coaster. Uh, happens to be Kristen's first roller coaster. It happens to also be my daughter Allie's first roller coaster and her daughter uh, Jaden's first roller coaster. So uh, this has some special meaning to me, has some special meaning to all of us. And Boulder Dash was actually built and designed uh, in partnership with Kennywood and their design team um, to emulate an adult version of Roller Coaster. So that was the inspiration for the ride when it was built. We're super stoked to get to ride it. From what we hear, it is one of the best night rides in the country. I know I'm stoked. Yeah, it's going to be pretty wicked. Um, but maybe not as wicked as Wicked Cyclone. We'll find out here shortly. Apparently this thing won a few awards back in the day. How high is it? See how, uh, see how good it is. But, yeah. Superman, let's get it. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see those airtime hills just off in the distance here. This should be pretty crazy. I mean, there's nothing that gets me more turned on than a big hunk of intimate. Man. Wow. Let's get it. Now, how the heck do we get into this thing? So, 03, 
six, oh, seven, oh eight, oh nine. Oh my. So, we'll uh, have to see how this one goes. Now, she happens to be quite the fan of Millennium Force, and uh, I think this is going to be pretty damn similar. We're going to see. Um, I got to be honest, this looks like it's going to have more airtime than Millennium Force. Oh, yeah. They still look crazy. Intimate airtime is different, though. It's built different. If you've ever ridden Skyrock, then you understand Intamin injector airtime because it is, again, it's just built different. Um, not even RMC comes to the intensity level. Intamin gets a little crazy. Yeah, I'm really excited. Let's see. So, a little immediate reaction and thought. Um, it was really good. Uh, what did you think? I was surprised. I expected it to be more ejector, kind of like uh, Superman at uh, Darien Lake and Superman at uh, Six Flags America and Bowie. Um, but yeah, that surprised me. That was pretty crazy, uh, you know, float ejector to floater airtime. Um, it was. Personal. I won't say that the airtime is as good as like a diamond rack or something like that. It, it doesn't have like. Elite VNM level airtime, but for an intimate, it was surprising and it was really good. Um, the tunnel, okay, we talked about the tunnel. Yeah, the tunnel was, awesome. um, was really good. Cool. Awesome. So the hill, the first hill, the drop was awesome as well. Yeah. Um, Next to the lake. great ride, great ride. Is it better than Millennium Force? I don't know. We're gonna find out when we ride it again. Uh, I believe that this is gonna be a front row ride, which typically I'm a back row guy, but I don't know. I just, I have a feeling that this is a back row ride. We're getting ready to ride uh, Thunderbolt. Um, we have a Goliath opportunity here today to uh, get some new credits in. I really wish that, uh, I really wish that our day wouldn't have had to begin uh, all the way down here. The New Haven area, and then all the way up here to uh, Agawam, and all the way back down towards New Haven. Kind of like we were just going like a giant boomerang all day. Mm -hmm. It's a shame. It's very sad. Good job, Silverwood. You did the right thing. So, holy cow, that is borderline offensive. That wooden roller coaster's name is Thunderbolt. And, uh, being from Kennywood, I gotta tell you, that is borderline disrespectful. Um, I think they should rename it Firewood. Um, wow. Uh, talk about, talk about underwhelming, eh? What did you think? Yeah, it was almost scary to get on. Yeah, it was, uh, I believe the the official coaster aficionado word is janky. Uh, it was janky as hell. Uh, but no, still a beautiful park. But uh, yeah, the, the ride crew there for Thunderbolt, pretty funny, pretty funny situation. Um, I mean, you would expect and think that we were about to get on a world-class ride with the level of seriousness that they took their job. Not great dispatch times, but still took their job pretty seriously um, as far as not allowing people to select rows and what have you. Um, but, yeah, a little bit awkward, but uh, still good experience. We had hit the uh, the Wild Mouse a little bit earlier. Um, pretty standard run of the mill. Um, nothing too special. As a matter of fact, probably disliked that one a little more than most. Uh, not very comfortable, but it is what it is. We're gonna figure out where the hell we're going, and we'll check back in the later. So as we're in line here for uh, their version of Batman. We had joked a little bit earlier that uh, every park had a Batman clone. Um, 
But this is the only park that does not in a fixed bike train. I believe I could be wrong about that. But uh, BM Floorless, we are here. Line's still pretty short. Um, the whole park has been minimal weights all day. Um, I think we've had a pretty darn good day so far. And we're going to locate Wicked Cyclone at some point in the park. Try to hit the other side of the two headed monster created here in by Six Bikes. So, yeah, let's see how this turns out. I mean, being end product can't be that bad. Oh, wait a minute. They made stand up coasters. So, just got a uh, quick ride on Pandemonium and on Wicked Cyclone here at Six Flags New England. Right before we're headed out, uh, a little bit before 7 p.m., uh, really awesome scenery here. You see all the fog. Um, I think some of that's actually natural. Um, but yeah, great overcast days, perfect weather for this type of stuff. Um, great atmosphere, great ambiance, really nice park, no major complaints. Some of the ride on teams, you know, it is what it is, not that great, but uh, you know, welcome to Six Flags. Thanks, Ole. But uh, no, in all seriousness, we just, great park uh, for the most part the staff has been great here as well but um, yeah a little I don't want to say underwhelmed or disappointed but uh, uh, our ride on Wicked Cyclone was really good don't get me wrong really good but not not to the elite level uh, of RMC that, that I would have expected I know K-Dog enjoyed it but I think that both of us are probably leaning towards the camp of maybe Superman is still the best ride here. Um, she thinks so. I don't necessarily disagree. Um, now, Superman may not be the, the most comfortable ride. Um, the harnesses have their challenges. They're not good for tall people, but... You know, intimate seating back in those days. You're <laughs> a lot going on here. Intimate seating back in those days uh, was even worse than it was in the mid 2000s uh, during the Fahrenheit Maverick Storm Runner, uh, you know, El Toro days. So, um, yeah, not the most comfortable ride, but it's doable. And the airtime really is awesome. So, we're excited to be able to ride that uh, again tomorrow and yeah we'll, we'll maybe hit a couple rides on that before we leave town and uh, who knows what tomorrow night brings but I know finally we will be headed back towards uh, the Seattle of the East Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania uh, but Six Flags New England we appreciate you you were awesome we'll see you again tomorrow for me and K-Dog, he's out. All right, we are making the walk up the hill to uh, Lake Compounds. So, Boulder Dash night ride, here we come. I gotta tell you, it is cold as heck. It got cold quick, but hey, you know what? This is what it's all about. Like compounds it is. I will say it was pretty cool to drive past the ESPN headquarters right before we turned in. Mm -hmm. And the drive back to the park seemed like it was seven miles long. We'll catch you later. Alright. A little boulder dash action in the dark. Here we go. Main attraction of the evening. They say this is one of the most anticipated rides. Get off the railing, please. Thank you. So, uh, Welcome to Bull Dash, everybody. Please take a moment to look at the floor in front of you. Those yellow numbers are your assigned seats for the coming ride. If you like those articles, please put them in the loose article bits on the exit of the station. So, hats, bags, glasses, that kind of thing. Cell phones, specifically. Uh, if you lose anything, we cannot get it back for you. The company's not responsible for anything lost, stolen, or broken. Really? 
relatively concise. What can I say? Super looking for it. The moment is palpable. So we literally just got off, and uh, first reaction is holy bad work. Um, man, did it live up to expectations. Uh, this thing is insane. Um, imagine a speed that you would deem to be too fast <laughs> yeah, it's for a ride, and then. <laughs> Put it up about 20% past that. And that is vulgar dash. Um, yeah, I mean, my heart is still racing. And uh, guys, I've ridden a lot of the best uh, in the country. And this is, this is one of those next level rides. Um, you know, they don't have many roller coasters here at Lake Compounds. Uh, Wildcat is under an extended closure. They do have Phobia Fear Coaster, which is a Skyrocket too. Uh, kind of fun for for me being a Kennywood guy, knowing that we had the original Skyrocket One, which kind of led to the development of uh, the Skyrocket Two. Um, and that was cool. Good ride. Has the original uh, plain Jane lap bars, like Skyrocket has at Kennywood. So I did enjoy Phobia Fear Coaster. Scared the you know what out of her. Uh, she was shook after that because you know of course it is Fright Nights or Phantom Fall Fest here, and uh, we did it in the complete darkness. So uh, it was great. It was great. But she was genuinely afraid, uh, and I haven't seen her afraid like that. Look at my picture. Yeah, we're gonna check out the picture here for Boulder Dash. Um, but yeah, this thing is incredible. Like I said, not many here, but holy cow, this is worth the price of admission in itself, and I cannot emphasize that enough. So, yeah, there are, I don't believe we're allowed to, to necessarily flash the pictures up there and uh, post it. I'm sure there's some type of copyright uh, violation on that, but holy cow, that is, that's crazy. I think we gotta go again. So, alright, we'll talk to you later. So, here is a uh, wildcat that's kind of featured at the center of the park, and uh, the, the main street, which we're on now, uh, leads to a pathway that kind of walks around wildcat, and the rest of the park uh, kind of tapers off from there, um, with this being the main entrance here. So, uh, the reason that I, I bring Wildcat up is we're walking out here at closing after a handful of uh, mini marathon rides on uh, Boulder Dash is we walk past and there is just a huge section of track missing uh, from Wildcat. Um, so yeah, I mean, work has already begun to, to do something there and, uh, you know, hopefully make the ride a little bit smoother. and. Maybe we'll get to experience it the next time that we're out in New England. But, uh, man, again, what an unbelievable ride Boulder Dash is. It is the absolute epitome of out of control. Um, and it's really good. But after a handful in a row, um, I got to tell you, it beats the crap out of you. Especially in the dark, uh, when there are absolutely no trims and, uh, yeah, you can't see, and I mean, we had never ridden it previously, so it made it even more surprising to us each and every time that we rode it, but I guess that is the fun of night rides, so uh, we will catch you here in a handful of days. Um, I think perhaps next weekend we might wind up at Knobles if we get some nice weather uh, for their little Halloween festivities. So, we shall see. Well, guys, that about does it for this video, at least. Um, it was a great trip. Uh, as I had said before, Lake Compounds, not, not a whole bunch there, per se, besides Phobia Fear Coast or Wildcat, whenever it comes back up, uh, and Boulder Dash. Uh, but Boulder Dash is a world-class, next-level attraction. Definitely worth the price of admission on its own. 
Um, so that's really a no-brainer. Um, six Flags New England. Um, I don't want to say that I was disappointed, but maybe my expectations were a little too lofty walking in uh, for the caliber rides that, uh, that they did have there to offer. And, uh, you know, Hershey, I mean, we, we do go to Hershey quite a bit, but it never ceases to amaze me, the variety and the quality lineup that that place has. Uh, we're, we're definitely going to be speaking more about Hershey uh, a little bit later throughout the course of the winter and talking about how this park is going to end up projecting against some of its peers and against some of its competition. Um, but, yeah, tremendous. Uh, leave some comments below, and we will see you next time, guys. Thanks so much. Take care.